So thank you for this introduction and thank you for uh, the invitation. So today I will talk about the recent results that I obtained with uh, Takeo Takahashi. And it concerns the feedback boundary stabilization of a flow extractor interaction problem. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so I will follow the TSMS instructions. So this talk will be divided into two parts. So the first part is an in, in introduction. So I will talk about uh, stabilization properties for finite dimensional system. Okay. Then we will see um, the stabilization of some abstract problem, so in finite dimensional uh, system. And the second part will be devoted to uh, the application of this theory for the local stabilization, stabilization of a flow retractor interaction problem. Okay. So let's uh, begin with uh, the first point. So here I consider a finite dimensional system. Okay. So Z of T uh, will um, stand for the state of the system. Okay. At time T. Uh, v of T is the control. Okay. And A and B are uh, matrices. Okay, so A is a squared matrices, B not necessarily. So this is the problem, exact controllability of the system at time T. What does it mean? It means that for uh, any initial state Z0 and any uh, uh, desired final, uh, final state at time T, ZT, okay, we can all, always find the control V in such a way the state will reach the T at time T. Okay. So this is the problem. And here, uh, what we need to impose, so which hypothesis we need to impose for A and B to have exact controllability. Okay. So, so here we write the solution of this system. So using the AMB formula, we know that uh, the solution of this system is given this way. We're, we want exact controllability at time t, then we evaluate at time big t. Okay, so we need to reach z t at final time. Okay. So what we need to do is to define this application, phi t, okay? That is defined by this integral. So exact controllability means uh, that uh, this application is surjective, okay? So taking this term to the other side, okay? Then uh, we see easily that if we have surjectivity of this application, then we have the exact controllability at time. Okay. Okay. So surjectivity simply means that uh, the image of this application is equal to R1. Okay. That is equivalent to say that the kernel of the adjoint operator is equal to zero. Okay, <clears throat> so generally uh, we reduce the problem of surjectivity to injectivity because it's, it's more simpler. Okay, so here we need to define the um, adjoint uh, operator. So it is very easy. So we take the inner product of this application with epsilon a vector of R1. So here we see that we can move all the operators to the other side, okay? So we uh, will have uh, oh, this function. So here uh, we conclude that the adjoint operator is defined uh, this way, okay? 
so the we have um we have exact controllability if and only if the kernel of this application is equal to zero. Okay. Okay. So for any, it means that for any vector epsilon, if we have this guy is equal to zero, so necessarily epsilon is equal to zero. And this uh, property is called observability, okay? So the system is observable observable if and only if. So for every epsilon, if this one is equal to zero for any S, then necessarily epsilon is equal to zero, okay? So uh, here I give the, um, one important um, controllability criterion, so it's called Kalman criterion. Okay, so if the kernel of this matrix is equal to zero, then we have controllability. So in fact, so we prove that the kernel of this matrix is equal to the kernel of uh, C star. So let's prove, for example, um, of the first inclusion. So let's take a vector in this kernel. It means that this chi is equal to zero. So we uh, here we recall uh, what does it mean um, that a vector is in the kernel. It means that this one is equal to zero. Okay. So we want to show that this epsilon uh, belongs to the kernel of this matrix. So what we need to do here is evaluate this guy at S equal to zero. So we obtain that B star epsilon is equal to zero. Then to have B star A star epsilon equal to zero, what we need to do is just take the derivative, okay? So we will have B star A star epsilon equal to zero and so on. Taking the N minus one uh, derivative, so we obtain Finally, that B star A star N minus one epsilon is equal to zero. So here we have shown that epsilon uh, belongs to the kernel of this matrix. So easy. So we want to show the other uh, inclusion. So taking epsilon uh, in belonging to the kernel of this matrix. So it means that we have uh, all this. And we need to prove that this epsilon belongs to the kernel of phi star. Okay, so here we use uh, the Kiley Hamilton theorem. Okay, which means that A star <laughs> is a root of the characteristic polynomial. Okay, so this one simply implies that B star A star power K epsilon is equal to zero for any power. Okay, so you can check it easily, which means that B star exponential S A star epsilon is equal to zero. Okay, so in this case, since A is finite, it's a finite dimension. So we know how to write the, N expo the, the exponential as uh, infinite expansion of power of A. So we have this, okay? So this one simply implies that epsilon belongs to the kernel of phi star. Okay, so we have done uh, the, the proof. Okay, so very easy. So we have another uh, controllability criterion. So it's called O2 criterion, which means that the system is exactly controllable if and only if the kernel of this matrix, okay, is equal to zero for any lambda uh, complex or equ equivalently. So this system is controllable if any for any epsilon uh, for any lambda, sorry, for any lambda and for any epsilon um, Asian vector of lambda, if we have B star epsilon equal to zero, then necessarily epsilon is equal to zero, okay? So this one is a characterization of controllability, okay? 
So uh, we can see uh, the proof here. Assume that the system is controllable. Okay. And let's prove this. Let's prove that if we have this, then necessarily epsilon is equal to zero. So let's take lambda in C and epsilon its associate agent vector. Okay. And B star epsilon equal to zero. Okay. So here uh, we start by saying that B epsilon equal to zero. We multiply by exponential lambda S. Okay, so this one is also equal to zero. Since lambda is a nation uh, value, it means that this one is equal to this one. And here we have, look, we use the controllability of the system. Since the system is controllable, means that this one implies that epsilon equal to zero. Okay, so we have the direct implication. Then how to show, uh, the other side, so the other, um, so the other application. So here we suppose that we will do it by contradiction. We suppose that the system is not controllable. It means that the kernel of the Kalman matrix is uh, not equal to zero. Okay, and then uh, what happened here? Uh, it happens that we can define the restriction of A star over this set. And this is well defined. Why? Because of Kylie Hamilton theorem. Okay, so we show that this set is uh, invariant with respect to A star. Okay, then uh, we have the existence of minimum lambda in C and existing, the existence of an Asian vector, its associate Asian vector, okay? In such a way, so this Asian vector is in, is in this space. It means that B star epsilon is equal to zero, okay? So using the, the Otis criterion, so it implies that epsilon is equal to zero and this is a contradiction. Okay, because epsilon is an Asian vector uh, supposed to be um, different from zero. Okay, so the conclusion is if we have a finite dimensional system, okay, so it is controllable if and only if we have the O2 uh, criterion. Okay. <coughs> So stabilization of this kind of, what does it mean, the stabilization? It means that, so this is the complete stabilization. It means that for any sigma positive, we can always find the matrix K in such a way this matrix is stable of rate minus sigma. It means that the real Asian values of this matrix are all less than minus sigma, okay? So in this case, we take the control um, uh, as follows. So V of T equal to K Z of T, okay? So in this way, so we plug this uh, the control in this system. So it means that Z prime equal to A plus B K Z, okay? So since this matrix is stable, so we have we have exponential stability of the solution. Okay. So one characterization of stabilization in this case is uh, the following. So the system is completely stabilizable with rates uh, minus sigma if and only if A B is exactly controllable. Okay. It means that uh, if we want to prove stabilization of such a system, we need to prove the O2 theory. Okay. So we move to the second point of the introduction. So here we consider infinite dimensional system. Okay. So here, for instance, I prefer to 
present uh, the example of the 1D heat equation just to see how it works, okay? So we have uh, this system. So here A is the, is the Laplacian, okay, plus uh, mu. So here mu is a potential that is considered in, so it is the constant in R, okay? So uh, here we put some mixed boundary condition, okay? on the boundaries and here b is a function in m2 and v is the control okay so the problem is to construct a finite dimensional control v in such a way um, the solution of this system is exponentially stable with rate minus sigma Okay, so this is the problem. <laughs> so uh, what you're gonna do is, uh, is to divide the spectrum into two parts. Okay, so here let sigma be a strictly positive constant. Okay, so um, so we know that that uh, the operator A admits um, a sequence, an infinite sequence of Asian values that tends to minus infinity. So we will divide this uh, sequence into two parts. So the first part are called the instable modes, okay? And the other part are the stable modes, okay? So. Here we have, um, so L2 will uh, admit a Hilbert basis, okay, spawned by Asian vectors uh, associated to uh, the Asian values, okay, so very basic. And we consider P plus, so P plus will be the projection of Z. Uh, into the instable part, okay? So that we will call it Z plus. So um, the first step will be the separation of the system. So we will write the system, so we will divide the system into two parts. So the first part is the instable part, Okay, that is associated to the instable modes. Okay, so here Z plus will denote the vector, uh, will, will designate the, the, the projection of Z over the N zero modes. Okay, A plus uh, will be the diagonal matrix, okay, formed by the first N zero instable modes. Okay, and the same for B plus, okay? So it is the projection of B over the instable part. And we have the second part that is that is stable, okay? And uh, that is associated to the stable mode. Okay, so the strategy, the strategy is the following. So uh, we need to construct a control that stabilize that stabilize the instable part, okay, that is of finite dimension. And then the final part will be to um, to check that this control will preserve the stability of the stable part. Okay. So here uh, we make an assumption. So the assumption is that AB satisfies a unique continuation property or Fattorini Otis test. So it is so it's um, it's very similar to what we have uh, seen in the later point. It is kind of Otis criterion theorem. Okay. 
So if we have this one, then we got the same property for A plus and B plus. Okay. And then uh, if we have this one, so we have stabilization of our finite dimensional problem. It means that we can construct uh, an operator K plus in such a way this matrix is stable of rate minus sigma. Okay. And the control in that case uh, will be uh, K plus uh, Z plus. Okay. So if we plug this control in the finite dimensional problem, okay, so we have. Uh, exponential stability, okay? And moreover, uh, since we have uh, control uh, written in feedback of the state, it means that the control will also decay exponentially with rate minus sigma, okay? So we have, uh, so we deal with the finite dimensional problem. So we move to the unstable part, to the stable part, sorry. Uh, so uh, we write the Duhamel formula, okay? And here, um, since we have exponential uh, stability, so this one will give us uh, this exponential. Okay, and uh, since A minus is um, a stable matrix, okay, of rate strictly less than minus sigma, so we can always have an alpha strictly positive, such a way this one is less or equal to this one, okay, because all uh, Asian values of A minus are all strictly less than minus sigma, so we can have some alpha uh, positive. Okay, so this is very crucial to make this integral converge. Okay, so we can easily uh, find that uh, Z minus, so the stab uh, stable part of the state, is exponentially stable. Okay, so this is the strategy. Uh, okay, so here what we want to do is to generalize this strategy, but for general parabolic abstract system, okay? So uh, here A will be the generator of an analytic semi group on a Hilbert space H with compact resolvent, okay? So uh, in the case of 1D heat equation, we had uh, a function in L2. So here we can, um, uh, we can generalize the strategy for any operator B that can be inbounded, okay? That acts from Hilbert space U. So this U is the control space, okay? into uh, the, so the dual of the domain of A star. So why we have this one? It's because here we just extend by, by extrapolation the, this, this equation, because Z, for example, if we consider directly boundary condition, and we consider, a con if you consider a directly control, so Z will be no more in the domain. So we need to, ex to uh, extend this operator, okay, to L2. And then we have this one, okay? So, so the problem is, given sigma positive, we need to find a control V, okay, the same, such that uh, <laughs> uh, this state decays exponentially with rate minus sigma. Okay, so the strategy is the um, is a spectral decomposition, as uh, we have uh, 
seen with the case of 1D heat equation, okay? So this is done uh, in, uh, on this paper. Um, so this is done by Mehdi Badra and Takeo Takahashi. So they have uh, shown that if we have Fatorini O2 criterion, then this kind of systems are uh, stabilizable, okay, by finite controllers, okay. It means that there is some matrix K. Okay? In such a way, the control is a feedback of the state, and they have eventually uh, make some uh, information about the rank of this matrix, okay. In such a way, this control will give us uh, stabilization. Okay, so their method is based on the composition of the spectrum into two parts. Exactly the same approach as we as we seen for the one D heat equation. Okay, so given minus sigma. <coughs> Since A is an analytic, uh, it generates an analytic semi group with compact resolvent, it means that we can um, have um, a sector that contains all the spectrum of the operator. Okay, since it is with compact resolvent, then uh, we have um, uh, sigma plus that is finite. Okay, so we divide the spectrum into two, two, two parts. So sigma plus will be finite and sigma minus will be in finite stable mode. Okay, so we can uh, decompose the operator uh, uh, by using a projection that is introduced in, in uh, by Kato. Okay, so we can decompose the space H into two parts, so H plus that is associated with sigma plus, okay, the, the instable mode, and H minus, so will be the space associated to sigma minus, okay, so we can eventually decompose the operator into two parts, so A plus and A minus, okay. So this is, uh, this is the projection. Okay, so using this projection, we can decompose the system into two parts. So the instable part satisfied by Z plus and the instable and the stable part, sorry, satisfied by Z minus. Okay, so there is no effort, excuse me. We can, uh, eventually we can put F, but for, to simplify, uh, I forgot to remove it from there, excuse me, okay? <laughs> hmm. Okay, so what we need to do, as we have seen, we, we need to construct a control that stabilizes the finite dimensional parts, okay? And then prove that this control, control the whole, stabilize the whole uh, system. So we need, so since we have Faturini Otis test, so we got this for the finite operator. So we have the Otis criterion. Since we have the Otis criterion, we have stabiliz uh, stabilization. Okay, so we have exactly the same result as we have seen before. Okay, and then, uh, to prove that we have stability for the whole system. So we use uh, the Duhamel formula, okay? That uh, writes uh, uh, like this. So here uh, B is no more bounded, okay? So what we need to do here, so, uh, we multiply and divide by this one, by this operator, okay? So here, uh, mu is uh, some element of the resolvent set, okay? So this one is well-defined, 
okay? So the things commute here because uh, the projection uh, is written in terms of the resolvent. The resolvent commute, commutes with everything, so there is no problem, okay? So what we need is to have stability. So we need that this one is bounded, okay? So we make the assumption that this one is bounded. And we call, we call it that B is relatively bounded with respect to A. Okay, so we need to have this one. Yeah. And since we have analyticity of the operator A minus, okay, so it means that this one can be estimated by this, by this term, okay? So this term will converge, okay, if gamma is between zero and one. So this this uh, statement is very important, okay. So after some standard um, manipulation, so we get stability of Z minus. So we got the stability of the whole uh, system, okay. So let's. Um, doing a quick application of um, of this theory. So here we consider, for example, um, the heat equation in uh, n-dimensional domain, not necessarily 1D, okay? And here C is a potential that is an arbitrary constant, okay? So here we consider Dirichlet control. Okay, so here we could eventually consider a control that acts only on an open, on a non-open, open, um, open set uh, of the boundary. But here for simplicity, I just consider that the control acts on the whole boundary. Okay. So this one, uh, so the operator here um, is analytic with compact resolvent. So it is analytic because it's coercive. Okay, so we know that it is coercive and uh, so with compact resolvent. So we have denoverable um, Asian values that tends to minus infinity, okay? And it is, moreover, it is self-adjunct, self-adjunct. So all the Asian values are situated on the real axis, okay? So what we need to do is to write this system um, into, an, uh, into an evolution problem. So we need to identify B, okay? So how it looks like. So uh, to define B, uh, we need to introduce the stationary system, so this one. So here, lambda zero is an element of the resolvent set, okay? In such a way, this problem admits a unique solution, okay? And uh, we introduce this stationary problem just to lift the control from the boundary, okay? So taking u equal to z minus omega, uh, minus uh, w. So you uh, verify uh, the system with homogeneous boundary condition, okay? So, so here, um, uh, just suppose that all data are regular enough, okay? Regular with, with respect to time, okay? Just to make sense to the time derivative, okay? Then we can have, um, then we can argue by density, okay? So uh, we write the dual formula for u, okay? Then after some integration by part, we obtain that Z is equal to uh, to this one, okay? Which means that Z 
is solution of this kind of problem. So here I rec uh, recall that W is just the it's just D zero V where D zero is the listing operator. Okay. So we uh, write the system um, um, this way. So here we define the operator B. So B is equal to lambda zero minus A B zero. Okay. So this is an inbounded operator. Okay, so to have um, stabilization of our problem, so since A is analytic, uh, so we need to prove that B is relatively uh, bounded with respect to A. It means that if we multiply by this resolvent, so this one is bounded. So in fact, so using the, um, the fractional power of the of the Dirac of the um, Laplacian operator, so we know that this one is bounded if one minus gamma is between zero and one by four. It means that if we choose gamma between three by four and one, so this one is is bounded. So we have a relatively, uh, so we have that the operator B is, relat is relatively bounded, okay? So what we need to show, we need to show uh, that we have the otus Fattorini uh, criterion. So the, um, the otus criterion simply implies that we have uh, this one, we have this system, okay? So, if we have this one, <coughs> uh, so it implies that epsilon is equal to zero. So why? Because epsilon uh, here is uh, an analytic function, okay? Uh, such that we have uh, this condition is equal to zero. So if we have this one, we can use on green theorem to show that in fact uh, epsilon is equal to zero everywhere. Okay, so it is because epsilon is an analytic function. So the conclusion is uh, that we can construct a finite dimensional control. In such a way, we have a stability of the system of rate minus uh, sigma. Uh, okay, so I think that I'm done with the first part.